Hey guys, I'm Ramo70, and I recently turned 17. And so I've come across about 13 games that, for whatever reason, have been in a previous game collection update. So I figured I might as well show them off here. And so let's get started with the only DS game to be in this update Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. So this game is. Uh, this is the first DS game, the first is DS Zelda game, I should say. Uh, as you all know, I also have Spear Tracks, which is the other DS Zelda game, and when comparing the two, Spear Tracks I think is a bit better. Now, before I get into why I think Spear Tracks is a bit better, I just want to say in this one, I'm only on the third dungeon. I've fully beaten Spear Tracks, I've done a majority of the side quests in Spear Tracks, and so I don't know if it's that really fair to say that Spear Tracks is a bit better than this, but so being only on the third dungeon of this game, I can't. I, you know, I feel like Spirit Tracks a little bit better. I like the story in Spirit Tracks more, uh, the gameplay, and I figure so a lot of the control issues in this one were fixed in Spirit Tracks or just removed altogether. Like in this game, there's a fishing side quest, and the fishing controls aren't really all that good. They're they're kind of broken. It doesn't really read you all the time, but it's a side quest, so you don't have to do it. So you you probably wouldn't notice it. Um, you know, and it's, it, I mean, it's not a bad game. I love, I love this game, actually. It's, I'm just saying it's not as good as Spirit Tracks, in my opinion, well, as far as I am right now. So, you know, now, uh, on to, like, what this game's about. This, as most people know, Phantom Hourglass is a direct sequel to Wind Waker, the GameCube Legend of Zelda game. In this game, you are aboard the pirate ship, you know, that, as, you know, you don't, you don't have the King of Red Lions um, anymore, although I think he does make a little cameo appearance in this game. You may not notice unless you do a certain side quest um, that's fairly er early in the game, like right before you even get to the second dungeon, you might find a little cameo of him. But, you know, you're on board of the big pirate ship along with Tetra and the other, you know, pirates. And all of a sudden, you come across the ghost ship. Now, the ghost ship was a side quest in itself of uh, during Wind Waker, and it was a short little side quest. You only you didn't really have to do it. it I think you get like a piece of a heart or something for doing that side quest. And this game is built around that ghost ship from Wind Waker. And in this game, Tetra finds the ghost ship. They trap they track it down, and she tries to jump aboard it, and she makes it successfully, but Link fails. You know, as you know, the humor from Wind Waker shows, Link often fails at life. <laughs> you know, he constantly smashes into things. But you know, so then you wash ashore this island, and you have to, you know, do all these dungeons with uh, the, your friend Celia. I think is her name. She's a fairy. She sounds a lot like Navi from Ocarina of Time, but she isn't nearly as annoying because she doesn't do the hey, listen, hey, listen. You know, whenever she talks, it does sound like Navi, but, you know, she, being a Zelda game, it's mostly text-based. You know, it, it doesn't pop up every time there's a new enemy or any of that. So, it, I mean, it's a very good game. I love this game. All right. Next up is the only new Nintendo 64 game in this update. Banjo-Kazooie. Back, as you can see, I got it for 13 bucks. Banjo-Kazooie... This is an old classic Nintendo 64 game made by Rareware, as you can tell by the little symbol here. Uh, this was back when Rare was, you know, pretty much the king of the 3D gaming industry. No matter what they did, they always seemed to make gold. They made a uh, GoldenEye 007 on the, you know, N64. They made Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, uh, Diddy Kong Racing, Donkey Kong 64, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. They made so many amazing games that it just seemed like no matter what they did, they would, you know, pretty much make gold. And this is another hit right here. Um, nowadays, Rare is bought by Microsoft, and they kind of do stupid stuff. You know, they try to re bring back Banjo Kazooie, but it failed. And so, whatever. But onto Banjo Kazooie. Uh, this is a really nice game. Uh, I have not played its sequel, Banjo Tooie, and I haven't played any other Banjo Kazooie game, uh, like Gruntilda's Revenge or any of that. Um, I do. Last time I actually played Banjo Kazooie before buying it was when I was like a little kid, when I was like four or five. So it's been a long time since I've played it, and it's actually really nice to come back and play it again. So the story of Banjo-Kazooie is pretty much a, 
there's this old fat witch named Gruntilda, and she's wanting to be the prettiest girl of all. In the story, if you, before I continue, uh, you may feel a little bit like this. The story of this game is like Snow White, and the beginning kind of plays out like Snow White, but as it goes on, it uh, it doesn't. But um, so what goes on here is that Gruntilda wants to be the you know fairest of them all, or whatever, and you know she asks her pot who's the prettiest of them all, and it. First it says Gruntilda is, but then it says, oh no, Banjo's little sister Tootie is. You know, and Tootie is just this little little girl, she's about like five or so. And so Gruntilda's like, no, no one can be prettier than me, I have to go stop her, I have to, you know, I have to go get her. And so Gruntilda goes out and snatches Tootie and, you know, kidnaps her, takes her back and puts her in this machine in which they attempt to, um, you know, switch beauties, you know, where... 2D will be the ugly old hag, and Gruntilda will be the pretty sexy woman. And you actually do get to see Gruntilda being sexy if you, you know, save and quit the game. It's she, she actually does turn out to be pretty. But um, I haven't beaten this game up right now. I'm on like World Three, which is one of the few worlds I think in this game you can actually skip. Um, because really you don't have to go there. You can easily if you go a hundred per if you're attempting to hundred percent this game you can easily skip it. But you know it's a really nice game. It's so far it's really fun. Uh, most of the moves are done by Kazooie here, so the game's more or less about Kazooie than Banjo. Um, so it's a great game. It's great to see Rare when they were great, and it, overall it's just a really fun game. All right, next I have three games for the original PlayStation. All three of these I've actually had for pretty much my entire life. I don't know why they haven't been in one. Maybe I couldn't find them or for whatever reason. Whatever. Starting off is the original Spyro the Dragon. This game here is, as many of you know, I'm a huge Spyro fan. And so this was the first Spyro game, and I just love it. It's... Um, there's a lot of differences between this one and its two sequels, Ripto's Rage and Year of the Dragon. Um, the main difference I can think of is that in this game, um, in in the other two games, it was it was always the same thing on how to travel between worlds or how to get to the next world. You know, in uh, I can't remember what it was at Ripto's Rage. I haven't played that in forever, and my game just don't work. Um, I know in Year of the Dragon it was obvious. Um, every you just had to go to every world and complete the main goal there. Um, in order to travel to the next one. You have to go to each level to complete the main goal. You don't have to do any of the side goals you know, in order to continue. But Still, this is a nice game. Uh, in this one, in order to travel between each, each in order to travel to the next world, it's always different. You may have to click a certain amount of treasure. You may have to open a certain amount of treasure chest. You may have to defeat a certain amount of enemies. You know, and there's just so many different things you could do in here. And the worlds are in this one, I think, are a lot more vast and you really want to explore the worlds in this one more than you do in any of the other Spyro games. Uh, because they're just so vast, and none of them feel like they have a linear path. In fact, in the first um, world you're in, there's one level where literally the exit is kind of just in, like kind of in front of you. But the world itself, you want to explore it more. In this, The story in this game is that all the dragons have been turned into statues, and so Spyro has to go and rescue them all. Well, he doesn't have to rescue them all, but he pretty much has to rescue a good majority of them. And so every time you rescue a dragon they may give you hints or they may just thank you for rescuing them. And I thought that was pretty nice that they did that for all I don't know how many dragons are in this game. I've never actually beaten it. But still it's a really nice game. Uh, I love it and it's not just because I'm a Spyro fan. It's mainly because it's just a really fun game. So yeah, Spyro the Dragon. Next PlayStation game is Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Now, this is the only Crash game I've ever played and i ever owned or rented or any of that. Um, and I gotta say, it's a really nice game. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the, any game that has like a one-hit kill. You know, I'm just not, I don't know. It, whatever. Um, but, you know, in this game, you know, I actually like, I actually had a lot of fun with it. It's not too hard and, you know, I mean, later levels, yeah, it does get extremely difficult. But, you know, early, it doesn't start off hard, you know, it doesn't start off kicking your ass, 
like uh, many other older games would. You know, and it's really it's a really fun game. So, um, it's it's just fun, and uh, the story behind it is oh god, I can barely remember it. I think it's like Cortex, the which was the main villain. You know, Crash is arch enemy. Um, Cortex once crashed to help them find crystals for whatever reason. I can't quite remember at this time. Um, but still, it's a really nice game. It, you know, 